Well, hey guys, how are you all doing? This is Anna Kloppenborg with your EVTV EU update. This week at EVTV Amsterdam, uh, we are spending our time getting ready for the next boat show that we will be exhibiting on. Um, in fact, the last boat show that we were on, uh, um, Boat Holland in Leeuwarden, was a bit of a small time, more consumer event. Um, but being there meant that our um, trade organization, Electric Boating Holland, has asked us to now be an exhibitor at the Hisva in Amsterdam. Well, the Hisva is really the big deal. It's the big cheese of the boat shows uh, here in Holland anyways. A lot of boats will be exhibited there. And instead of having a little corner booth where we can just get a few batteries in and show the, um, the videos that we've been making, which was cool, it was definitely successful, uh, we will now actually be able to exhibit the Delta inside in our own booth, uh, have a big screen with a beamer and put the videos up, uh, plus get some of the good EVTV components, some of the batteries, some of the motors uh, uh, out front and centered with good lighting. Plus we'll have a place in the little harbor uh, that is also part of the show and be able to put the silverback there. So we should be making a little bit more of a, a, a professional <laughs> put together image. Um, and that means that we also want to step up, not just in the uh, display items, but we want to step up a little bit in our, uh, um, you know, our media and our uh, materials that we have at the show. Um, that means that uh, we brought in some people this week to uh, uh, think with us on how to go forward and present the EVTV components, how we can market complete systems to uh, boat builders uh, and uh, shipyards that are then serving their own customers. They're often getting these questions now. Well, what about electric? How is it going with electric? Uh, but a lot of these shipyards, really, they've got 20 guys that know everything about diesel and everything about gas engines or marinized engines, but they really don't uh, um, have the time nor inclination to choose from the hundreds of different batteries and motors and combinations and fuses and controllers and programming. So if we could step in and uh, show that we not only have the best components with the EVTV lineup, but that we have the experience that we've built our own boats and that we are ready to serve uh, uh, shipyards or boat builders with complete EV drivetrains, ready programmed, ready designed for the application, battery boxes in the right sizes, that kind of thing. Uh, we could probably do a lot more business and convert more boats, get more people experiencing that electric power uh, as it goes on the water, uh, which would be a good thing for everyone, right? So um, it's always a little bit weird when you get other people in and they've got ideas. Uh, but uh, they came up with something that I think is kind of cool, uh, keeping it personal, keeping it techy, but slightly more uh, um, accessible. So we're going with a theme which is kind of like blown apart. Uh, uh, Todd McLennan, I think it is, I'll put up a link behind us, uh, is a guy that made a book uh, about taking technological objects and then blowing them apart, but you know, actually really uh, organizing them into all their sub pieces. So this week we did a bit of our uh, live collaging with all the EVTV components we have on hand uh, uh, and uh, made a little sum that looks like this. Uh, laughed as if you're laughing in the wind, like, ah, mannequin. A bit to the side as well. You have an answer to an email. That's it, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Thomas, you need to, uh, yeah. So just keep on doing a few different types, you know, move around and go, yeah, and we'll just get the stuff we want. Go on. Brilliant, Raymond. Now stay still, Anna. Great, perfect, done. <laughs> so, you know, there's me and Ray uh, trying to um, have fun and be directed, <laughs> which is it's always going to be a little bit weird. I'm getting used to this whole uh, EVTV camera stuff, um, but it's a new frontier for us to uh, start showing uh, 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 more of what we do in a, uh, um, I don't know, in a more stylized way, I guess. Anyways, who knows, it'll be fun. Uh, um, we are definitely gonna um, make the most out of our opportunity to show the Delta, show what it does, um, and show all those good components and that they are now affordable, high quality, and that we can give the service and uh, um, you know, get builders involved without them needing to uh, uh, spend the three years we did getting to this place. We can do it for them. 
So that's going to be pretty exciting. It's next week, uh, starting on Wednesday, the 5th of March, up until Sunday, the 9th. Uh, if you're in Amsterdam or looking for an excuse to come, this would be it. Uh, we're in hole number one, and uh, you can always uh, shoot us a line, uh, come see what we're doing. Uh, we'll have all the EVTV stuff there, so it'd uh, be great to see you. Otherwise, uh, I'm sure I'll put it in an update sometime soon. Mm, I promised you guys some Delta testing, didn't I? Uh, weather did not hold, so I wasn't able to give you an update last week. This week, we had about one good day of weather to go. So, of course, uh, uh, early in the morning, we uh, got out to the new Amir, and uh, we're just about ready to pop the Delta into the water. When suddenly we realized this is our original prop, and I'll superimpose a picture of the new prop we got. And first one to notice the difference besides the size, get the prize. Yeah, this is a left turning prop, and our new prop is a right turning prop. So, uh, whoopsie on uh, uh, our shipbuilder that measured everything, ordered the new prop, got it on because she's a beauty and I'm sure she's going to be great. But we have a bit of a problem. Um, not as much of a problem as you would have had with a, uh, you know, uh, with an ice engine. Uh, on stern drives, you can generally set which direction you want to rotate, so it wouldn't have been that bad. But on a lot of direct drive setups, uh, uh, if you have an engine that turns a certain way, you can't just start turning it backwards. Uh, um, you know, reverse is generally a, a gearing thing. Uh, um, if we'd had a DC motor, like we often did on the other projects, we wouldn't want to start turning it into the brushes. That would have been a problem. But okay, we have an AC motor, the AC 35 times 2. So really, uh, um, reverse forward, it should all be the same. And uh, we could actually just pop the boat into the water and get going. But on one of our previous boating attempts, we had found out that actually having 100%, having 120 kilowatts of power in reverse and having it come up as quick as we have the forward power come up was just not such a great idea. So there we were at the new Amir, had a couple of hours to go do our thing. And we realized that, uh, yes, we can pop it in reverse, try and remember what you're doing with all this power in this little boat. Um, but we wouldn't have full power because I mapped her to, like, I think 60% power in reverse plus uh, uh, um, the ramping was just way off. So, uh, uh, you know, we would now have the complete reverse system where going forward we'd have all the power, but forward is backward. Backward is forward, and we have only half the power, and it comes on really slowly. Um, so it's just a mess. And, uh, of course, we were a little stressed out at that moment. But, um, you know, what was there to do but take the boat back to the shop and do some quick reprogramming? So off we went, back to the shop from the new Amir, all the way around town. Uh, uh, got back into um, the shop here. And then, of course, I mean, we were going to, we thought about, you know, we re just reprogram the throttle, get back out there. But I figured if we're here, we've got the computer set up, uh, we're going to go into the Curtis programming. I know that you can set, you know, the encoder direction, uh, reverse the encoder direction, basically. And uh, that way, make forward, backwards, and backwards, forward. Because I had spent a lot of time getting used to the throttle controls. And by just, you know, opening up reverse, which would then be forward, uh, I would still be, you know, risking uh, uh, oopsies. And oopsies with 120 kilowatts in a small, very expensive boat in, in, in uh, testing phase uh, is just not really what I wanted to do. Uh, so we got into the program, got in deep, and uh, uh, had the encoder's direction set up. Which all seemed to have gone golden. Uh, I got, you know, the good, uh, the RPMs, which were first set as minus, were now set as plus. So I was still going in my throttle pot. Everything was going to be good. But then when I uh, let the controller power up the motor again, we found out we have a problem. The AC35 times 2 times 2 is not one motor, and it's not one controller. It's two motors with two controllers, one being master, one being slave. Now, the master takes over throttle control, but it doesn't quite take over everything for the slave. And the slave does have a second uh, um, uh, connection that you can also put a second Curtis Instruments 
uh, a display on, having its own RPM measurement, having its own temperature measurement. Uh, so even though through the VCL software the uh, um, slave is throttle controlled by the master, uh, it turns out it's not encoder controlled by the master. Or at least, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Celso Mania, Celso uh, <laughs> Curtis Whisperer, or anybody else that's out there, correct me if I'm wrong. But, um, of course, we had the programming lead for the master controller was out there and we could get to it. The programming lead for the slave controller is buried way deep in the back of the boat. Now, remember, we had about five hours to go testing Two of these are left after all the driving around, dicking around, and finding out what we're doing. Um, so uh, we had to go back to plan B, which was uh, put the encoder direction back in the way it was and uh, uh, just open up reverse throttle and then take her out as quick as we could. So, you know, so doing, we uh, uh, reprogrammed uh, the encoder back to the original position made sure that we now did not have this stuttering thing with the two controllers trying to fight each other over forward direction. And uh, we just opened up uh, reverse. Uh, this meant that we didn't have enough time left in the day to go to the new Amir, which is really the good testing area. So I decided to go out to Eiburg. I'm in the east side of the city. Eiburg is on the east as well. So at least we could get out to the water quicker and uh, maybe do this testing, because I wanted it done, for God's sakes. I've been waiting for this prop for half a year. Um, so we get out there, boat in the water. Actually, my cousin, who's a bit of a Hollywood star, a <laughs> French guy, uh, living it up in Los Angeles, uh, played in different movies and that kind of thing. He was there, too, so I had him in the boat. Figured we'd take some pictures, this and that. And then uh, um, <laughs> we go out to the sluice gates, and we call the sluice master, you get a little 06 number to call. And uh, he just kindly informed us that uh, everybody was soft sick and uh, he didn't have anybody to come open the sluice gates for us. So, <laughs> after waiting for the prop for six months, uh, uh, all the harrowing events of that day, trying to get everything reprogrammed and done, the one good day that we have to test the prop before we have to get the boat ready for the show. And there we're stuck in the harbor, a no-wake zone. <laughs> and there we are trying to test a boat that was going 60 kph, and will it now go 75? Ah, so um, not the greatest moment. Um, I did a little bit of scouting around, and uh, I figured I had to be a little bit of a bad boy, at least to feel what she's like, right? So um, I took the boat around the harbor and looked kind of something like this. Even it's focused.
Okay. I've had as much bad boy as be for one day, but uh, I can definitely say putting on a new prop was uh, pretty much a great idea. We had the sluice blown open for us, so uh, actual full speed testing will have to wait. All in all, pretty good day for the Dell. Okay. Well, I wasn't able to get full power out just yet, but I can let you know that the new prop is a good idea. Uh, it definitely has so much more blade um, that we can now, I feel that in that three to 4,000 RPM zone, she's gonna be really sweet. Um, I really can't wait till after the boat show when we get her back in proper water in a good, good day um, to do some of this long distance testing. I mean, you know, no, I wanna cross the English Channel and we're gonna do that at about 40 kph, which should be you know, about three, three and a half thousand RPM and be at the sweet spot. And I'm hoping to get that kilowatt output level for that speed down to about 30 kW, um, because that way we can put enough battery on board and I actually make it and do it under an hour planing speed. But that day, it, it just didn't help, didn't really work out. Uh, um, it, the boat feels great. And I think going forward, We've got a lot to uh, look forward to, but so far, uh, um, a tantalizing taste, not quite the full bite yet. <laughs> I will update you on the future of the Delta. In shop news, to finish up this week's update, um, we are getting <laughs> closer to those better place packs. Uh, Jax uh, told us all about uh, the many delays and probably this week's show uh, hopefully we'll be presenting the fact that uh, uh, they've either come in or there's a definite ETA on them coming in. They should be en route from New Jersey to uh, uh, Cape Girardeau uh, just about now. Uh, some talk of extra cost. Uh, um, we'll have to see what that all amounts to. But uh, as Jack has alluded before, I had um, my shipper standing at the ready to take 10 packs over to Holland. And uh, with the pre-orders and the emails and the nibbles we've come in, 10's not going to be quite enough. So I'll be um, calling people individually once we get some definites on quality and price. Uh, I'll be you know, calling you or mailing you. You know who you are. Um, and then I'll be calling and mailing Jack and seeing if we can or should uh, bring over some extra packs uh, before they're going to be all gone. So uh, guys, have your checkbooks ready. <laughs> Because we're going to have to uh, uh, pay as you go on this one and get them all over. Um, let's hope they turn out to be uh, uh, what we want them to be and that we can all stick them into a better place uh, and have something happen with these cells. It could be really cool. Uh, Kickstart a lot of builds here in the EU as well as the USA. Uh, so that's pretty great. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that we're going to be adding because we've been waiting for the better place pack to be there so we can all load up things into one shipment. Uh, we're definitely bringing over Siemens, DMOX, uh, E-Gears. Um, we've got some AC HBVS requests. Um, I need a lot of new fuses and straps and DCDCs and that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, uh, from a bad thing could come a good thing. Uh, this is your week. You can give me a call and, uh, you know, five weeks later, you can have your stuff here in the EU uh, uh, and it's going into bulk shipments. So uh, if you're thinking, if you're on the fence, uh, drop us a line at sales at evtv-amsterdam.eu and uh, I'll definitely hook you up with that good EVTV stuff here in the Europe's. Well, that's about it for this week. Um, next week we're at a boat show, but I'll definitely do a quick little update and give you impressions of what that all is like. Uh, who knows, maybe there's some other cool electric news at the boat show, and otherwise there will be our cool EVTV electric news. You all keep building. We'll keep building. See you soon. Bye-bye.